Hello, dear students. Welcome to lecture nine, episode number two. My name is Inge Paulini. I'm secretary general of the German Advisory Council on Global Change. From now on, I will call it WBGU. And in the first episode of this lecture, you heard from Silke Beck about the role of scientific policy advice, different models, and so on. And now we go into the real world of political um, scientific policy advice. And uh, I would like to talk to you about the way how the WBGU works. In this lecture, you will learn how this specific scientific advisory council works. Uh, you will learn about the broad range of activities the WBGU does and what products we produce. Um, you hopefully will have a better understanding afterwards on the role of the WBGU as a scientific advisory council. And uh, we will talk a bit about the impacts or the success, if you wish, um, of the efforts of the WBGU. It was established this council in 1992, right before the conference in Rio de Janeiro on sustainable development. And back then the German government um, set up this council and gave it the tasks to deal with all the issues that were dealt with in Rio back then. Sustainability, which meant environmental issues, development issues, also economical issues. Um, and the WBGU had a task to and was to analyze global environment and development problems. The WBGU has a task to submit policy proposals, to give recommendations to the entire political arena, basically, but as a first vis-a-vis um, -vis to the federal German government. Um, the, another task is to provide early warnings on new emerging issues or topics which are not seen widely yet. Um, the WBG reviews and evaluates national and international research and also identify gaps in research and initiates new research or says where new areas of research should be initiated. And a completely different task of the WBGU is to raise public awareness in all these topics and issues it works about. All the products and all the paper, books, whatever we produce, is produced in German and in English at the same time. Um, and most things are printed, but everything can be found on the internet. This is the current group, the members of this nomination period, which runs from November 2008 until October 2012. And I will introduce them to you, going from left to right, starting with Nebojša Nagicinovic. He is an economist and he comes from Austria and he is an expert energy on global energy issues. The second one is Hans-Joachim Schellenhuber. He is the chair of the WBGU and he is a physicist and a uh, very well-known specialist on issues of climate or climate change. Then you see myself, after that Klaus Legevi, he's a political and cultural sci social scientist. Sabine Schlacke is the lawyer in this group and deals with anything national, international, environment law and so on. Stefan Ramsdorf is a physicist and a specialist on issues when it comes to ocean interaction with climate or climate change. Renate Schubert is an economist, she comes from Switzerland. Jürgen Schmidt is an engineer and a specialist on renewable energies, specialist on wind energy specifically. Second before last is Reinhold Leinfelder. He is a geologist, a specialist on biodiversity issues, but also Anthropocene issues and also science communication. And the last one on the right side is Dirk Messner. He's the vice chair of the WBGU and he is a political scientist. This is the group that is currently working. Um, every four years, a, one group, some members change, is nominated by the federal government. So in the center, basically, we have these nine experts. As you saw, they come from many different disciplines to be able to deal with this width of breadth of different issues um, that WBTU uh, is to work on. Um, 
the group is nominated by the federal government, but except from that, it is a very independent work. The WBGU members can um, decide on the topics which they think are urgent. They can decide on the reports they make and on the issues they want to work on in these four-year periods. I will talk about the products they produce in a minute. So there is no real everyday interaction with the government who initiates this advisory council, but there are meetings. Uh, when the council is nominated in the first place, there usually are talks with parts of the government, with ministers usually, um, mostly ministers of the environment or and or ministers for education and research. Those two ministries are the ones that sort of carry the WBGU. They um, provide the financial resources and they do the administrative work. So that is part of the interaction with the government. And there is also a formal interaction of the WBGU with the government in a group that is called Interministerial Working Group, WBGU. And this group is set up uh, with members from all the different federal ministries and the federal chancellery. Uh, the WBGU works with these groups on a more or less regular basis and usually talks with this group when the council decides on the next topic it wants to work on and sort of has framed the next product um, and usually also there's another talk on the next report with this interministerial working group on the recommendations or the drafts of the recommendations. So there is a process, interaction of the WBGU with the government to see um, what is needed in the political arena, but again, the council itself is independent. Um, next to the government, there are also interactions um, and discussions with the German parliament and also with the Bundesrat, which is the representation of the German lender. Um, and these two groups usually publish the reports or papers, statements by the WBGU as their own papers. So WBGU reports become official paper work that can be found in the Bundestag and Bundesrat. Um, then also, of course, we communicate with the general public, with the press, with stakeholders outside, with business, with uh, academia, of course, with the scientific community, and so on. Now, coming to the operational part of the work, um, the WBGU members do have scientific support, research scientists at their institutes that support them in their work for the WBGU. And there also is a secretariat with 10 people um, that is a mixed technical and scientific support for the members. Um, these research assistance or the research, uh, the scientific support is also interdisciplinary, so you have a mixed group of different scientists there too. WBGU is a very heavy working council, meaning that um, we meet every month for two days, which is, which means that our, is our regular meeting load, if you wish. And every two years before we finalize a flagship report, we usually meet again additionally for almost a week. Um, and then, of course, there is more time needed and more time from the WVGU members needed for input, which I will talk to about in a minute. So we have this heavy load working council, but what do they do? What are the products? Um, there are four different products, basically, and the biggest one and thickest books, if you wish, are the flagship records, we call them. Um, they have approximately 300 to 400 pages. Just for you to get a feeling for the difference of issues that the WBGU has been dealing with in the last decade, I just go through the different reports and talk about them and uh, let you know just in a couple of sentences what the report was about. And I'll start in the year 2003, talk about the report Sustainable Energy Systems 
And this report underscored back then already the urgent need to transform the global energy systems so that the world's population has access to energy based on renewable resources. This is necessary in order to protect the global climate and to liberate many millions, billions, sorry, of people in developing countries from energy poverty. Such an approach would also yield a peace dividend by reducing the dependence upon re regionally concentrated oil reserves. Such a reconfiguration of energy systems is feasible and it can be paid for if a rapid and resolute action is taken in the coming two decades, is what the WBGU said in the year 2003 already. The next report was published in the year 2004 and dealt with poverty and environmental policy. And poverty and environmental problems interact in various forms. And they are two of the most urgent challenges facing the international community today. The recommendations for action set out in this report are based on an analysis of the systematic links between poverty and the Council looks specifically at income poverty, disease, malnutrition, lack of education, social stability or instability, and social capital, and looked at the interlinkages with environmental changes like climate change, lack of water resources, water pollution, soil degradation, loss of biological diversity and resources as examples. A very different topic, but still interlinked, of course, is the issue of climate change as a security risk. And WBGU was one of the first ones to bring up this topic and this interlinkage, and this report was published in 2007. And back then, the Council stated that without quick counteraction, climate change will overstretch many societies' adaptive capacities. And this could result in destabilization and violence. And climate change can draw ever deeper lines of division and conflict in international relations, triggering numerous conflicts between and within countries over, for example, the distribution of resources, especially water and land, or over the management of migration. Future Bioenergy and Sustainable Land Use was the next flagship report. It was published in 2008. And the WBGU central message in this report is that use should be made of the sustainable potential of bioenergy, which can be tapped all over the world, but only provided that risks to sustainability are excluded. In particular, the use of bioenergy must not endanger food security or the goals of nature conservation and climate change mitigation. Then the Social Contract for Sustainability was published in 2011, and you do know this report already because this is what the entire lecture is about, so I will not say any more about that now. And on this slide you see the cover page, the front page of this flagship report. The next one, last one in this row of our flagship reports um, is Sustainable Oceans and Low Carbon Transformation. That still is a working title because at the time this e-learning lecture is filmed, the report is still in its making. It will deal with how the ocean governance should be structured or modified in order to best serve the transformation towards sustainability. And this report on oceans will focus on fisheries, aquaculture, and energy derived from the seas. The next big group of product is the special report. And um, the special reports deal with somewhat uh, narrower issues or topics and uh, are less extensive than the flagship reports and they have plus minus 100 pages. So you get a feel for that. And we look in just the latest special reports that were published, again starting in the year 2002 and looking at the last decade. Um, back then the special report was published that dealt with the use of global commons and was called charging the use of global commons. Background for that is that global common resources like international airspace or the high seas are in danger of over-exploitation because the users need not 
bear the full social costs of their actions and the use of these. So imposing user changes can close this regulatory gap and induce environment-related incentives and thereby reduce environmental damage. Moreover, so the statement of the WBTU back then, additional financial resources can be generated in this way and these should be earmarked for the protection and conservation of global common goods. In the year 2003, the WBTU wrote a report, Climate Protection Strategies for the 21st Century, Kyoto and Beyond, and it underscored that dangerous climate change can now then only be prevented if climate protection targets are set substan at substantially higher levels than those agreed internationally until then 2003 again. Another report dealt with back then already oceans, a special report on oceans was published in the year 2006 and was called the future oceans warming up rising high turning sour. And this report showed, th showed that the failure to check mankind's emissions of carbon dioxide will have a severe consequence for the world oceans and it will result in continuing warming and ongoing acidification. Both pose serious threats. And the sea level rise is exposing coastal regions to mounting flood and hurricane risks. In the year 2009, right before the famous uh, climate conference in Copenhagen, WBGU published a special report called Solving the Climate Dilemma, the Budget Approach. And in this report, WBGU has developed an innovative approach to solving the problem of climate change. A key component therein is an agreement between the community of states regarding a cap for the total amount of carbon dioxide that may be emitted up to the year 2050 globally in form of a global budget. And this budget approach was designed as a straightforward, transparent and fair reference for climate policy makers. The third groups, group of products or the third product we have um, is what we call a policy paper. And um, policy papers consist of policy-oriented statements. They are produced for certain conferences, for certain uh, processes, usually in international politics. And they have plus minus 30 pages in length. I will just walk you through the policy papers of the last couple of years, starting in the year 2005, with the paper called Development Needs Environmental Protection recommendations for the Millennium Plus Five Summit. And back then, WBGU addressed the Millennium Plus Five Summit in 2005 as an opportunity to set a new course in international poverty reduction policy. Two years later, there was another paper published called The New Impetus for Climate Policy, Making the Most of Germany's Dual Presidency. And the paper presented opportunities to drive climate change uh, sorry, sorry, climate protection forward during Germany's presidency of the Council of the European Union and at the same time that Germany had the presidency of the G8 in 2007. Coming to 2010, we talked about the climate conference in Copenhagen just a minute ago. Now we are after that uh, conference and WBGU published a policy paper, What Should We Do Now, after the outcome of that conference. This policy paper is called Climate Policy Post-Copenhagen, a three-level strategy for success. And the Council stated that the international climate policy post-Copenhagen is in crisis and that there was back then and still isn't currently no prospect of the comprehensive and binding UN climate treaty being achieved for the foreseeable future. The Council recommends that in order to revitalize the multilateral climate process, policymakers and civil society in Europe take on a self-confident leading role in global alliances with selected climate pioneer countries or actors and that more intensive support be provided for civil society initiatives. 
the last policy paper, and this one is not published yet at the time this film is made, but will be published soon, um, is called Funding the Global Energy System Transformation. And this policy paper deals with the issue that in Germany and in many other countries worldwide, um, we are facing a fundamental transformation of their energy systems. And billions of dollars, euros, whatever, will have to be invested worldwide in converting energy systems and in raising energy efficiency. In this policy paper, the WBGU shows that sufficient private capital is available worldwide. However, it must be mobilized by implementing a decisive regulatory policy and by reducing investment risks. The fourth type of product that the WBGU produces is what we call fact sheets. Fact sheets are just four pages long, little small papers, and they are supposed to give you an overview over a specific topic in a very short and rather concise way. And in this list, I'm not going to read them all, you see the topics of the fact sheets um, starting in the year 2009 when the first fact sheet was produced dealing with bioenergy, with climate change and with different issues taken from the flagship report Social Contract for Sustainability. Now we go beyond the publications that are produced by WBGU and we'll talk about further activities that the members of the Council but also that the scientific support teams take on. Um, and this group of people um, is very active in presentations of their reports, of parts of the reports, um, gives public lectures, takes parts in panel discussions on national and international level. Last, the latter is very important as many of us carry our reports, the insights, the recommendations around the globe. This happens, for example, and this is just a very little um, flash we can take, for example, at side events of UN conferences and committees of the Deutsche Bundestag, the German Parliament, in academia circles within their um, scientific communities or our scientific communities, um, in public debates, through articles in the press, through interviews in the media, on TV, wherever. WBGU itself presents or provides platforms by organizing, for example, symposia, by organizing discussions, not the least before the press, as federal press conferences are organized, usually when we hand over a new product to the federal government. Um, we oftentimes discuss it publicly with and before the press. Um, another area of work we do is somewhat different as we make an assessment of the outcomes of international negotiations. We usually take part in big UN conferences as observers usually and try to give an assessment after the conference is ended and usually we present press releases or statements on these issues. What we do for the first time, and you are the first observers to see how it goes, is we produce a film from one of our flagship reports, from this report, uh, the transformation report. And now we uh, try to make an e-learning package out of this to transport the insights we had and everything we learned to the universities around the world again. I would like to show you something about the word success of the scientific policy advice. The success or the impact of the WBGU work cannot be measured one by one or cannot be quantified um, in a very specific way. But we have quite a number of hints that um, the reports did have or the recommendations did have and still do have. Um, quite an impact and quite an effect. And I would like to start with the two degrees Celsius, two degrees Celsius guardrail. Um, it was elaborated by the WBGU as a concept for climate policy in 1995 already. Has been discussed quite a bit. And meanwhile, it has become a guiding principle of the EU and the German climate policy and was adopted as a target by the UNFCCC in 2010. The next uh, issue is Scientific Panel for Biodiversity. Um, the WBGU 
recommended in the year 2000 already that such a panel um, analogous to the IPCC for the issues of climate change should be set up for biodiversity. And now, in the year 2011, the so-called IPBES actually came into existence. Um, in the field of bioenergy, the WBGU was, among others, one of the first ones to emphasize um, and to raise awareness on the critical importance of the issue of indirect land use changes. The current debate on the global transformation to sustainability, which was sort of fueled by the report we're talking about in this lecture, um, uh, in this debate, the WBGU was among the first ones to launch the debate and to combine it with the German so-called energy vendor. We do know that we do have quite an impact in school curriculum, uh, in school curricula, sorry, that reports or part of WBGU reports are published in school books and are dealt with in many schools in Germany. I would like to almost come to an end um, and show you what important voices from the sus global sustainability arena think about our books. For example, Christiana Figueres, who is the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, and she said that this book deserves a wide recognition. Janusz Pastor, who is the Executive Secretary of the UN Secretary General's high-level panel on global sustainability, looked at our report and says, the WBGU report, World in Transition, a social contract for sustainability, offers us extremely interesting ideas on how we can bring all this together, collective three, through a new social contract that is global, equitable, and green. I would also like to introduce you to uh, another hint relating to the relevance of the issue. It was stressed by the federal chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, who gave a keynote speech um, at a WBGU symposium on the global transformation in Berlin in 2012. And we will now take a short look at her speech. As Lord Stern has demonstrated, doing nothing has a high price. We have to be constantly reminding ourselves that things will not get any better if we avoid taking action. It may seem like the path of least resistance, but it will prove to be just the opposite in the long term. Finding a sensible way to deal with our finite resources, as well as climate change, has become a completely global issue. The last 20 years have made it clear that the issue is no longer something for the industrialized countries to address alone. Even if they did go it alone and take all the right action, we would still have a climate change problem. Global warming would still continue. Nowadays, the responsibility lies with other countries too. That said, what we agreed in the Framework Convention on Climate Change still holds true. We have common but differentiated responsibilities. The industrialized countries have a prominent role to play wherever they can. In particular when it comes to developing and testing technology, as well as taking the lead in new policies. Let me say very clearly that my vision of Germany and Europe taking a leading role also has an ethical dimension. Of course, taking that role is partly about safeguarding our own standard of living. But it is also our moral duty to conduct test phases, to learn how best to deal with a complex of new energy supplies, resource efficiency and efficient technology, and to subsidize progress. After all, while other countries did not yet have the wherewithal to pursue the same prosperity as we enjoyed, we spent many years and decades over-exploiting the world's resources. With that in mind, we have a duty to redress the balance somewhat. I feel that we should step up to that duty and, what's more, turn it to our advantage. You are all here representing various branches of science. 
Bleiben Sie hart. And I want to say one thing to you. Stay stubborn. And to put it bluntly, don't be afraid to get on politicians' nerves from time to time. If you have good arguments, we will listen, and we won't be able to wriggle out of them. That communication is happening all over the place. Keep working to increase the community within our society of people who say yes, we need fundamental change. Mrs. Merkel asks the scientific community to play an active role in advising politics and you all students of these lectures can play an active role in the transformation too. I would like to thank you for your attention and I hope I was able to make you a bit curious and you want to know a bit more about the WBTU and you find a lot of information on our homepage. I invite you to visit it. It's www.wbtu.de. Thank you.